movement for justice and equality was long and difficult, yet Nashville was prominent in its success. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. brought the movement to worldwide attention. The movement had traction and inspired hope. Much has been accomplished, but more accomplishments remain. We have a dream. We invite all of you to join one of the nation's largest marches as we celebrate the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Back to the second segment of the show for today. The topic is slavery and gun violence in the South. And we're talking to Alana McLaughlin, and she's given us some information in reference to the presence of so many slaves in the South that it prompted many people uh, among the slaveholding class to uh, seek out methods whereby they might be able to uh, control uh, these slave, this slave population. Now, I think you've given us some information in reference to two uh, slave insurrections that uh, created this kind of fear and the need for safety in the South. And go, let's talk about it from that point perspective. Now, in the first segment, I talked about the Stone Row Rebellion, which was the deadliest rebellion, and then I talked about the Nat Turner Slave Rebellion. Now, let's go deeper into the whole Nat Turner Slave Rebellion. The Nat Turner Slave Rebellion, also known as the Southampton Insurrection, was a slave rebellion that took place in Southampton County, Virginia, during August of 1831. Led by Nat Turner, rebel slaves killed anywhere from 55 to 65 Caucasians, slave owners, the highest number of fat fatalities caused by any slave uprising in the South. The rebellion was put down within a few days, but Turner survived in hiding for over two months afterwards. In the aftermath, there was widespread fear and white militias organized in retaliation against the slaves. The state executed 56 slaves accused of being part of the rebellion. In the frenzy, many innocent enslaved people were punished. At least 100 blacks and possibly up to 200 were killed by militias and mobs. Across the South, state legislators passed new laws prohibiting education of slaves and free blacks, restricting rights of assembly and other civil rights for free blacks, and requiring white ministers to be present at all black worship services. And, and, and so go on and explain that. Now, what does that mean to you, all of that? Now, at the end of it, it says that white ministers had to be present at black worship services. Now, that was, now that was included because Nat Turner used to hold little group prayer meetings, like Bible studies, that, which we call it today, where he would talk about how he was playing, like the Lord was talking to him and the Lord would tell him that he needed to do something to slave owners to get back at them for slavery. And now, our, our Caucasian ministers have to be present there so they can report back to slave owners to be like, so there won't be another Nat Turner, there won't be another Southampton insurrection again. And so all of this violence that was, was uh, created by Nat Turner with the uh, Nat Turner slave insurrection uh, uh, appeared to uh, make slave owners uh, anxious in terms of uh, the presence of slaves. And you think that that had something to do with uh, the presence of gun violence in the South. Expand upon that. Well, let's start with the fun fact. Now, most people do not know this, but Nat Turner actually asked Harry Tubman and Frederick Douglass to be a part of his slave revolt. Now, Harry Tubman said yes, but she became ill during the rebellion, and Frederick Douglass had a prediction that the slave revolt wouldn't work, so he declined. Well, well that was the John Brown and, and, and some of the things that he was involved in. And how does John Brown fit into such a story that you're telling? Well, both of them had rebellions. <coughs> John Brown had the rebellion at Harper's Ferry, and Nat Turner had the Southampton Insurrection. So basically, they both had they both had the same goal to free slaves, and they both did them in very awful manners. Um, like Harry Tubman, now she put slaves through the Underground Railroad, so no killer was involved in her in her situation. But now John Brown was like, yeah, we're, we're just going to kill these people to free these slaves. And Nat Turner was like, yeah, we're going to kill these people to free these slaves. So basically, they tie in together for both killing Caucasian, lots of Caucasians and many African Americans. And, 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 and so John Brown, uh, what happened to John Brown? What was the ultimate fate 
of uh, John Brown uh, during the uh, period uh, after his revolution at Harper's Ferry? Well, after his Harper Ferry incident, um, he was hanged. Now, another fun fact, at, um, two people, well, two, over 2,000 Confederates were present during his execution, but they were a few, mm, a few blocks away. And most people don't know this, but Giles Booth stole a Confederate outfit to um, gain access into he into the um, hanging of hanging of John, John Brown. Brown. And also, I think it was Stonewall Jackson, future Confederate General Stonewall Jackson, and John Wilkes Booth were both there. Now, John Wilkes Booth, it, most people know him as the man who assassinated Abraham Lincoln. And it's funny that he was also there at John Wilkes Booth's execution. Mm -hmm. At John Brown's execution, you're John saying. John Brown, I mean. Execution, you're saying. Very good. And so this, what, what, what this indicates uh, is that uh, this whole violence uh, uh, associated with the individuals that you've uh, indicated made many people in the southern parts of the United States, as well as all other parts, uh, uh, conscious of uh, the possibilities of these uprisings and the possibilities of these uprisings made them create various kinds of laws in which to what control others. What happened to Nat Turner once he was uh, uh, captured? Well, once Nat Turner was captured, he was also hung. And along with over, over 100 <coughs> blacks, he was hung. Because of this, uh, of the because revolution. Because of his And, and so this, this created, what you're saying election. is that this created a real tension throughout the southern parts of the United States in reference to violence and in reference to trying to protect themselves against slavery. So would you say that slavery uh, caused a lot of uh, gun violence in the southern parts of the United States? Well, gun violence was gun violence back then. I mean, Nat Turner did what he wanted to do. John Brown did what he wanted to do. But it was their choice. Now, it wasn't well, most gun violence in the South back then was because of slavery. Mm -hmm. But I don't think slavery, it was because of the things that slavery was doing. The slavery itself wasn't the whole cause. It was the thing that was happening during slavery, like the way slave owners treated slaves was the reason that they wanted to do with the, the to insurrection. against the insurrection. In the so world. basically, Slavery itself, no, but the things that happened during slavery, yes. Okay, very good. And of course, we'll be back with our audience uh, following this very, very short uh, commercial break. <laughs> 